Hello there, we will talk about retinopathy of prematurity or ROP here. So ROP is a disease of the retinal vasculature in preterm babies, as its name would imply. So this is always in babies who are premature, this is an in term babies. The exact cause of ROP is unknown. Uh, However, likely it's due to increased production of VEGF, or vascular endothelial growth factor. And what this does is it's, it triggers vascularization. And so because there's increased production of VEGF in these babies, supposedly, you have abnormal vascularization in the retina. And that increases the risk of, vascular, of retinal pathologies and particularly retinal detachment, which leads to blindness. Uh, but the exact pathogenesis is still not fully known. Uh, it affects more than 50% of babies that weigh less than uh, 1,250 grams at birth, and that's roughly two and a half pounds. Uh, and then 10% will go on to develop more severe disease. So there is a continuum in ROP not all babies with ROP will go blind, and most of the time, ROP is, uh, is uh, self-contained. I mean, it's not going to go on to blindness. You don't need to do any surgery. Uh, it will remit on its own. However, uh, like I said, 10%, they go on to develop more severe disease that will require surgery. So symptoms... This is really uh, a difficult one to diagnose just based on the appearance of the baby alone. Uh, the one symptom that you can rely on sometimes, but not always, is leukocoria. And leukocoria, we tend to think in term babies, is a congenital cataract or uh, is possibly retinoblastoma, and that can happen in a preterm baby as well. But in a preterm baby, if you have leukocoria, retinopathy of prematurity should be on your differential. However, not all babies with retinopathy of prematurity have leukocoria, and not all babies with leukocoria certainly have retinopathy of prematurity. Um, so for this reason, uh, that symptoms aren't really necessarily present or staring us in the face, screening is important. And uh, at the end, I'll go over uh, some of the guidelines for uh, how to screen babies for retinopathy of prematurity. And on the screening, uh, there'll be an abnormal fundoscopic exam. And the screening exam is done by a pediatric ophthalmologist. The risk factors for retinopathy of prematurity include, of course, prematurity. So the more premature the baby, the higher the risk. And that risk really goes up when the baby is less than 32 weeks gestation. Low body weight and that kind of coincides with prematurity, but especially if the baby is less than 1,500 grams, uh, that uh, roughly uh, coincides with that 50% range. So uh, they're more likely to have it than not. As some figures say 1,250 grams, some say 1,500 grams, uh, but there is a point where the baby is more likely to have retinopathy prematurity than not, and that's roughly around that three pound range. And then supplemental oxygen. So this is one that we didn't know uh, until uh, recently, within the last 10, 20 years. And so babies who are premature were always given supplemental oxygen, which is good because a lot of them have other problems. However, supplemental oxygen can trigger VEGF uh, production. And that VEGF, we now know, triggers abnormal vascularization in the retina. And so that is what's thought to uh, be behind uh, the retinopathy of prematurity. So babies who get supplemental oxygen are thought to uh, be at higher risk. Hypoxemia is another risk factor, and so that is kind of counterintuitive because you would think, well, if they're on supplemental oxygen, if that's a risk factor, why is hypoxemia a risk factor? Both uh, high oxygen and low oxygen are risk factors. So you kind of have to straddle uh, a happy medium. And that medium is thought to be around 85 to 90 percent of saturation. Uh, however, you should defer to the neonatologist on that. Uh, they're the ones who will know exactly where to keep the baby. Hypercarbia kind of coinc coincides with hypoxemia and then concurrent illnesses, male sex, and intrauterine growth retardation. 
As I mentioned, the severity varies. In most cases, the disease will spontaneously regress. However, it can lead to complete retinal detachment and permanent visual deficits, uh, which is generally blindness. So this is the retina here, uh, and this is just it's kind of splayed out. Uh, but the retina, remember, is in the back of the eye. It's where the image projects, and it's on a relatively small area of the retina. Uh, but uh, when you're looking with the ophthalmoscope, you're really not seeing much of the retina. You're usually only seeing about 5% of the total retinal area. So, for instance, this is what you would see with an ophthalmoscope, and what you're really only seeing here is about this amount, or my pointer is circling, so not very much. Uh, but the retina is relatively large compared to that area. So you have the optic disc, uh, and that optic disc uh, is where all your arteries come out, where all your veins go in, and where the nerves from the retina uh, transmit into the, uh, uh, into the brain. Uh, then uh, you also have a, uh, a macula, and that macula is a structure, this is a sort of reddish uh, structure, usually with this kind of yellowish halo, uh, as you can see here. And uh, that's where a lot of your rods are. Uh, so uh, also useful here uh, to note is the aura serrata. Uh, the aura serrata is uh, it's Latin for serrated edge, and that's the edge of the retina. You can see it's kind of the serrated pattern here. So that, that's the edge of the retina. That's what aura serrata means. Okay. So here's a normal optic disc and macula. So all your nerves that are conducting what you're seeing uh, from the retina transmit into uh, the optic disc and optic nerve. Uh, and then here's the macula. So the macula is a structure that contains other substructures, and most notably the fovea, and uh, it's just this red spot in this sort of halo-ish area here. Okay. So note that a lot of these arteries, the little arterioles, go into this area, so you know that there's something going on here. All right, so, oh, here's the aura serrata too. You can see this kind of serrated edge. So we divide the retina up into retinal zones, and this becomes a little bit important when we're talking about retinopathy of prematurity. So retinal zones are zones one, two, and three, and uh, it's kind of difficult to, at first glance, to see it and figure out how we're exactly uh, pinning these down, uh, but uh, it can be explained. So zone one is a, this circular area, right? And it's defined as this circular region with a radius of twice the distance from the optic nerve to the macula. So here's the optic nerve, here's the macula right here, and the radius is twice that distance. And so you draw the circle around there. So there's your circumference. And so that's zone one. So if you go back here, here's your optic nerve, here's your macula, and about twice the distance would be about right here. So you would have your radius would be here, and then you draw your circle around. That would be all zone one. Okay, zone two would be the distance from your optic nerve to the nasal aura serrata. So, oops, sorry, the aura serrata uh, on the medial side. And then it would be everything within that circumference, that radius. So the optic nerve to the nasal aura serrata is the radius, and everything within that circumference is zone two, with the exception of what's in zone one. So here's zone two here. And then zone three is everything else, and you can see that makes kind of like a crescent shape. And when ophthalmologists write up their findings, they will uh, refer to both zones and they'll refer to clock hours. And this is pretty self-explanatory. So you've got 12 o'clock, which is superior, 3 o'clock, which is uh, medial on the right side, uh, well, uh, lateral on the left side, I guess. 
but it just follows like a like a clock. So 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, etc. All right. So here is uh, those retinal zones. I transferred them onto that picture that we saw earlier. So here's your optic nerve and your macula, and twice that is your radius of zone one. Zone two is the optic nerve to the nasal aura serrata, and there's your radius here and your circumference, and then zone three is everything else. So if you have retinopathy of prematurity within zone one, that's the worst kind, uh, because that's where most of your rods and cones are, where you're viewing things, uh, where the image is projected, and so that's the worst place to have ROP. Now in addition to where the ROP can be, there are stages of ROP. And I kind of alluded to this earlier, whereas some of the earlier stages, one and two, don't necessarily need to be uh, treated uh, with surgery yet. Uh, stages three, four, and five are more severe and they require more intervention. So how do we define these stages? There's lots of ways the stages are defined, various features that are present, but I kind of broke this up into uh, the most boiled down definition. And I don't expect the USMLE to ask you about this, but it's good to know the uh, progression of stages just to understand, have a, have a more deeper understanding of ROP. So stage one is uh, the presence of a demarcation line, and that demarcation line is simply uh, part of the retina that has vascularization and an immature part of the retina that doesn't have as much vascularization. And you can see a, 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 very, a very obvious line uh, that goes through that area. Uh, so um, I should, should just show you a picture here. So this is an example of a demarcation line. So you've got vascularization, and not, no vascularization, and that's a demarcation line. Okay. Stage two, that demarcation becomes a ridge. So rather than being a two-dimensional line, it becomes a three-dimensional ridge. And that will be pretty apparent when you do your, uh, your formal exam. Ophthalmologist will do it, but just pretend you're the ophthalmologist for now. So instead of a demarcation line, it will be a three-dimensional ridge. Stage three, you start to get vascular pro proliferation, uh, and you'll see that most notably around that ridge. And then stage four and five are where you start to have retinal detachment. So stage four is partial retinal detachment, stage five is total retinal detachment. So here I kind of illustrated it for you here. So here's normal, stage one, you have the demar demarcation line, stage two, you start to get a ridge, which is three-dimensional. Stage three, you start to get fiber vascular proliferation around the ridge. Stage four, you start to have retinal detachment, but it's only partial retinal detachment. Stage five, you get total retinal detachment, and if it's severe enough, you can have also hemorrhaging. There's also what's known as called plus disease. So some babies with retinopathy of prematurity, in addition to having a stage, they also have plus disease. And plus disease uh, can be, uh, you don't need to have all of these features, just one of them. So if there's significant vascular, uh, vascular dilation or the, the vasculature is tortuous, that would confer uh, an additional diagnosis of plus disease, ROP plus. If there's vitreous haze, if the pupils are conserved in a restricted uh, uh, position, or if there's iris vascular engorgement, any of these would confer plus in addition to, so it'd be stage one plus, or stage four plus, or stage three plus. Okay, so here's stage one. This is your demarcation line. So you can see you got relatively normal uh, vasculature here, uh, but a demarcation line present. This isn't a ridge, this is just a line. So here's stage two. You can see that this is a ridge because there's it's, this is three-dimensional, so it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of hard to see. I have to take my word for it, but this is more three-dimensional. It'd be easier to see it if you were looking with the instrument and you were able to look at it from other sides, but this is a three-dimensional ridge as opposed to this, which is just a line. 
Uh, here's another example of a ridge right here. And everything beyond that ridge is immature avascular. So here you have a ridge right here. This is kind of a closer up view. Uh, and then you have that fibrovascular proliferation where you have a lot of uh, little small uh, arterioles growing around that ridge. And that's from the VEGF. So here's another example. Here's your ridge right here. And then here's the proliferation around that ridge. So stage four, uh, you start to have retinal detachment. So this is partial retinal detachment here. Uh, I believe this would be your ridge right here and you have some detachment here. And the detachment kind of looks like a cloudy, uh, opaque sort of appearance. And it's just the, the retina detaching from the supportive tissue beneath it. Here's another example of retinal detachment here. You can see what may also be possibly some hemorrhaging starting to develop. And stage five is defined by total retinal detachment. You can see the retina has been pulled away from the underlying tissue. So for diagnosis of retinopathy of prematurity, though leukocoria can be assigned, the best way to diagnose ROP is to screen at-risk infants with a dilated fundoscopic exam, and these babies will be referred to pediatric ophthalmologists for assessment and for the exam. So the guidelines are that all babies born less earlier than 30 weeks of gestation will be uh, screened with the fundoscopic eye exam. All babies born weighing less than 1,300 grams, which is about 2 pounds, 13 ounces, will be screened with the fundoscopic eye exam. So beyond that, babies that are born between 30 and 36 weeks uh, and babies that are born weighing between 1,300 and 1,800 grams, and 1,800 grams is about almost, almost 4 pounds, uh, those babies will be screened if they received supplemental oxygen. And then any baby that's received prolonged supplemental oxygen exposure that was born preterm uh, should also be uh, assessed for ROP. So these are the guidelines. And these babies will get referral to ophthalmology and a fundoscopic, dilated fundoscopic eye exam. And the ophthalmologist will be able to make the definitive diagnosis whether ROP is there, and if so, uh, what zone it's in, what stage it's in, and uh, what the follow-up should be. And this exam should be performed by five weeks of age. A lot of premature babies are in the hospital for some time, and so uh, they may be in the hospital longer than five weeks, so you may have that baby in, uh, you need to perform the exam by five weeks of age. So the treatment for retinopathy of prematurity, if it's stage one and two, they can be observed with regular exams every one to two weeks. And usually stage one and two will uh, be arrested in that stage and they'll regress spontaneously. Um, and once it's completely regressed, then uh, the baby's considered uh, to be cured or no longer have ROP. Stage three and higher need to be treated uh, because it's considered that once you reach stage 3, you will go into stage 4 and 5. So stage 3 and higher is treated with laser ablation or cryotherapy, and what this does is it's, it arrests the vascular proliferation, prevents you from progressing into further stages. And the risks for any baby uh, who has retinopathy of prematurity is the subsequent development of strabismus or myopia, and these babies also uh, have an elevated risk of retinal detachment, even if the retinopathy of prematurity regresses.